Hello, this is Father Scott Leanna from St. Thomas of Canterbury Episcopal Church in Greendale. And this reflection is being offered for Sunday, May 9th, the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. And it's also Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I am offering this reflection on Facebook and YouTube uh, for members of St. Thomas of Canterbury Parish who are not yet able or comfortable uh, coming together for in-person worship, and also for uh, people who have joined us remotely for prayer uh, with the things that we have been posting uh, during this time of pandemic. So what I'm going to do is pray uh, with you the prayer that is um, indicated for today's celebration. And then I'm also going to read the first reading to you that uh, is going to be a part of the Masses that we'll be celebrating. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. I'm going to offer a little reflection and then a blessing. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can know or desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And here's that reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon him and all who heard his words. The circumcised believers, the Jewish Christians, who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And then Peter said, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And so he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited him to stay with them and teach them for several days. Can you believe it? I can almost hear the people saying, even the Gentiles are getting the Holy Spirit. What would have made this so astounding is, is that the early church, the early Christian church, was really comprised of Jewish people who had come to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So it was really, it was a faith comprised of, of Jews, of Jewish people. And so when it began to be evident that the message of Jesus Christ and his gospel was something that was going to grow beyond the confines of any one people, but really be available to everybody, including Gentiles, that was stunning. It was amazing. It was almost as if they were asking, is there no limit to, to where or to how God can work or, or the ways that the Holy Spirit can touch God's people? And if you read the book of Acts, you will find the answer to that question is no. <laughs> there is no limit. Absolutely everybody is invited to partake in the kingdom of God proclaimed by Jesus Christ. And that truth is as real and as important to us as it was to those very first Christians that we hear about and read about in the book of Acts. In 1986, Ruth Coker from Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, she was 26 years old and was visiting a dear friend of hers in the hospital. It was her best friend and she had cancer and so Ruth found herself in the hospital every day that she could be there. At some point, she would stop in and visit. She tells the story that down the hall from her friend's room was another room in the hospital with a closed door, and it actually had a red piece of, of tarp or material hanging uh, on the doorway. And in front of the door were several trays of, of food on styrofoam that were just sort of stacked up and, um, and left there. And and Ruth said this just did not at all fit with the character of this hospital, which was spotless and efficiently run by, by very caring and devoted nurses. And so she asked about this door, and the nurses said, do not go in there. We don't go in that room. And when somebody finally had to, she said the nurses would often draw lots and, and do everything that they could to avoid that room. 
Well, one day she just, she couldn't help herself. And so while the nurses were busy caring for other patients and her friend was taking a nap, Ruth walked into that room. And there was a young man laying on the bed, um, so thin and so very, very frail. And she said to him, honey, what can I do for you? And he said, I want my mama. I want my mother. And so she went back out and she told the nurses he wants his mom. And the nurses said, his mom isn't going to come. He's been there for six weeks and nobody has come. A young man named Jimmy had AIDS. This was just at the beginning of the AIDS crisis in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And that would later, uh, obviously, just become a, a countrywide phenomena that we would deal with, a tragedy, as well as something that would engulf uh, the world. And so she called the man's mother and said, your son is asking for you. She said, I don't have a son. And she went on to describe him as a sinner and somebody who had brought so much shame upon the family. And she said, he's dying of that disease. And when he dies, I don't even want to know about it. Well, Ruth just could not stop thinking about this young man, about Jimmy. And so the next day in the evening, she went back into his room and at this point, he was sort of in and out of consciousness. And when he saw her walk in, he reached out his hands and he said, Mama, I knew you would come. And she sat down, she held his hand, and she said, I'm right here, son. I'm right here, honey, she told him, and I'm not going anywhere. And she prayed with him and talked with him and then just sat quietly. And 13 hours later, he died. Word got out about this lady who was being kind and loving and caring to young men with AIDS. And this would go on then really to define Ruth's life. And she was asked in an interview, well, why did you do this? And she said, well, it's in the Bible. I'm, I'm supposed to do this. And so was everyone else. You see, Ruth understood in her own way and in her own circumstances that the Holy Spirit will be poured upon, God's grace will be lavished upon everybody, and that it is not our job to figure out who receives the Spirit and who doesn't, who is blessed and who isn't, who is part of God's kingdom and who isn't. Like that very first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, can you believe the Holy Spirit is even being given to the Gentiles? Ruth would have said, the Holy Spirit is even being given to these young men as they care for and support one another and love one another and seek to live lives with dignity and to die with dignity as we grapple with this then unknown disease. Last Sunday, far less dramatic but wonderful, a group of uh, young people in our parish youth group got together and talked about this experience of going through and being in the midst of pandemic. And they shared with each other so many of the things that they missed, and I'm sure you can imagine what those things are. And then I asked them to talk a little bit about maybe some unexpected graces or gifts or blessings that might have been a part of, might have been a part of COVID that, that they would never have thought about. And they talked about things like having more time with their family. These are teenagers. They talked about reading books about getting outside more often. They talked about realizing on a new and deeper level what their friends really meant to them. They talked about actually liking going to school and being with other people. And they talked about the ways that their parents, their teachers, and other adults in their lives reached out to them and offered them care. One of the youth group leaders said, you know, our family is constantly running. We are a busy people. And she said, I think one unexpected blessing of COVID was to recognize that sometimes it's okay not to be busy and to have some time simply to be with one another. Again, this notion, God's spirit being poured out even in the midst of pandemic. And I know the stories are, are legion, aren't they, of, of healthcare professionals, of professionals, of, of family members, of loved ones, of so many who stepped up in so many ways, whether it was to offer care or, or assurance or to be there for others. And so God's grace, 
the Holy Spirit, it will be lavished upon all of God's people. And we don't control it. It's not up to us. Our job is simply to stand back, watch it in awe, and really not get in the way. <laughs> the book of Acts that that first reading came from is filled with stories about God's Spirit being poured out in abundance on all the unlikely people in all the unlikely places and situations. And so even you, even me, we too are receptacles of the Holy Spirit and God's gift of grace. So I want to invite you today and in coming days to just be open to that abundant love of God's grace, God's Holy Spirit, in people, places, situations where you would least expect to find it. Pray that the next time God's Spirit is being lavished upon someone or something, you just get out of the way and bless it and be grateful for it. And most importantly, understand and know that as God's beloved child, you too are called to be blessed in abundance with the grace of God's love and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, so that when your time comes to simply do the next right thing, to be the loving presence of Christ, you can simply shrug your shoulders like Ruth Coker did and say, well, it's in the Bible. I think it's what I'm supposed to do. Amen. And now a special blessing for Mother's Day for moms and for those who have been like a mother to us and those who are now living that vocation. Gracious God, you compare your love for your people to the love of a mother for her children. Your own son Jesus knew the comfort and security of his mother Mary's love. We ask you to bless those in our lives who have known the joys and sadness that fill a mother's heart, heal their disappointments and pain, and grace their days with health and peace. May they who cradled new life in their arms one day know your own divine embrace. Please bless them all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.